Hey y'all, Kay here with Big Dreams Designs. I've been asked to do a tutorial using the Stitch Era Liberty software. I've been asked to show how to do offsets. Uh, so I took this opportunity to make a quick tutorial on how to do that. And also will also show you how you can go about doing, the term has been copyrighted. It's a lot of people know it as the knockdown stitch. It's basically a stitch that will knock down a area of fabric. For example, a terry cloth towel or a very dense Sherpa type material. You want to be able to smash that down to knock it down and be able to do a embroidery design on top of it. So I'm just going to take that uh, this opportunity to show you both of those areas. The easiest way to go about doing this is creating uh, your design first as a vector. We're just going to do a word. Now the uh, person that has asked me to do this is wanting to do a design that has sort of a cursive font such as this one. And we're going to um, do the word daddy. We're going to do bold. I'm going to do it about two inches for the sake of this tutorial and we're going to hit OK. So there's our design. We're just going to make it a little bigger. The first thing that we need to do, you can see by looking at these letters, these letters are still separated out. Okay. We want to do an offset around the whole thing. If you did it as it is now, it will not work. We need to weld these items together. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Layout, Combine Vectors, and we're going to hit Addition. And it will weld every letter together to a one single unit. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take this design here. All right, you can also notice that sometimes when you do your vectors like this, you're going to have some weird wonky little designs. Now, you may want to go in here and, um, you know, fix these areas, adjust these little areas if you want to. But for the purpose of this, we're really not, I'm not going to go in and change each one of those. Now that we have it welded together, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to, we're going to select the item and we're going to go to the layout again. We're going to do contour with offset. I like to select the initial one. We can do just this first default one. We want to do an outer contour and then hit select that one and hit OK. Okay, so there you see our outline. Now what this did do, which I did not change, but what it did was it um, did a line vector. I'm good. You can change that to a solid if you want to. First I'm going to take this this circle out here of the D because I do not want to do that. I want to do a flat fill in this area. So I'm just going to delete that vector there. I'm going to select the line vector and I'm going to turn it into a fill. There we go. We're going to pull this up here and we're going to put that design in the back. Now, if you want to create the embroidery design out of it, we can do that very easy. What we're going to do is we're going to select vector and we're going to go to embroidery and let's just defaultly stitch it and see what happens. We select the top area as it is and then we hit OK. OK, let's run our stitches. OK, we have done a area with a pattern. We have our stitch angle going directly horizontal. Depending on what your item you're putting this on, I like to take it a little off to roughly, you know, 25, 30, 45 degree angle. Okay, we've got quite a few stitches there. Again, depending on what you're putting this on will depend on the underlay that you have. Um, you may not want it to be that dense. Um, if you're putting, trying to put this white thread on top of a black fabric, you're going to need to make it a little more dense. 
However, if you're going to do a lot of stitching on top, you do not want to have bulletproof designs and you may want to lessen that density a little bit. I'm going to um, go ahead and move. This is my start. I'll move that here and I'll move my bottom down here and generate my stitches. Now you can go in this area and do and add a border to this existing design. However, when you have a lot of curve, a sharp angles like this, it often works better if you do it yourself. Just select our vector again. We go to, again, we can go to embroidery, art to stitch. We can hit the fill arrows, or let's just try doing the border and hit OK and we can make it a satin stitch here okay again you can see that I did this a little bit here but it's a little easier just to for me to go in and just kind of adjust these angles um, I'm gonna do view let's do our 3d view and you can go in there and kind of clean up these angles a little take some of those out adjust them a little bit add some stitch angles you can do that also when it's a area like this and the final thing I would like to show you let's turn back on our vector images let me go ahead and remove our objects here we can also change this if you wanted to make this um, and put this on a terry cloth towel, a Sherpa vest, some high pile fabric and be able to flatten that area down to put a design over the top of it. We can simply change the area. Select this. Okay. Embroidery, art to stitch, intelligent. Let's do, uh, let's just do fill areas only hit OK and we're going to make this instead of a pattern fill we're going to make it a cross stitch area with cross stitch these will defaultly come in at around four I like to keep them around two I did a design where um, I did it on a white terry cloth towel and the two seemed to stitch out the best for me it wasn't too dense and it wasn't too too thin where I still had the fibers of the towel coming through but again you'll have to do a test stitch out on the fabric that you're going to put this on and let's close that out and then there is an example of the the knockdown stitch and again you would go on this you can add a satin border around it if you would like you can do that by again let's select this we're going to go embroidery art to stitch art to stitch let's do a fill borderline only and hit OK we're going to instead of a running stitch we're going to change it to a zigzag stitch okay and you can adjust your density, the path width, the, um, and such if you need to do that. And if you want to make any other adjustments, just kind of play and see what you can come up with. I hope this tutorial has helped you understand a little more about how to do various things with the Stitch Era Liberty software. If you have any questions, you can post below. And... I appreciate you watching.